So continuing the growth of the internet, 95, Netscape comes out, starts the dot-com boom, new model, eyeballs matter, cash does not. Bill Gates launches Windows 95 and says, hmm, there's something called the internet out there. And he steers that battleship around and points it directly at the internet, and he targets Netscape. Of course, Netscape didn't survive very long after that. Deregulation of the data networks in 96. More email than postal mail in the United States, same year. Wi-Fi standard comes out in 1997. Barry Liner puts out a paper with a number of the early pioneers as joint authors, some of them in this room again, classic paper. Blogs begin to appear in 98. Napster rolls out, Sean Fanning and Sean Parker, 1999. Dot-com bubble begins to burst. Now things begin to unravel a bit in 2000. English is no longer the major language of the internet. 2001, 2001, Wikipedia's launch. We're going to hear all about that from Jimmy in just a moment, Jimmy Wales. Half a billion users in 2001. MySpace launched. Facebook launched. Mark Zuckerberg, 2004. Google is now the darling of the internet. What could be better? More benign, do no evil. Wonderful system. <laughs> Grokster closes down, 2005, due to a Supreme Court decision. YouTube launched, not too long ago. ATT disappears. <laughs> ATT reappears. <laughs> SBC took over the names. You, you can't keep these things down. Google Maps and Google Earth appear. MySpace exceeds Google page views. A bit of a shock to Google. Next year, is Google evil? Those questions are being asked back and forth. This is, now we have a battleground, basically, of the giants in the industry. YouTube is purchased by Google for almost $2 billion. ATT is now the largest US carrier again. By the way, ATT went down because they had some of the best scientists in the world and some of the worst managers, and they died of stupidity. But that's another story. <laughs> 2007, Apple launches the iPhone. Microsoft buys Facebook, $15 billion valuation. Google announces Android, their smartphone. A billion cell phones sold in 2007. That number is small now. Twitter comes on 2007. GPS everywhere, in your phones and all around your cars. Apple opens the App Store, 2008. Facebook overtakes MySpace. More Chinese on the internet than American, 2008. Financial crisis, things again begin to unravel in a different way now. Cloud computing takes over, iPad introduced. ATT phases out unlimited data usage, a major change in the way people use their mobile phones, significant economic impact. WikiLeaks leaks. <laughs> Facebook is the most visited website. Live streaming of that royal couple's wedding was the biggest event ever to be watched on the web. And yet the younger generation didn't think it was such a great thing. <laughs> you can't find that picture on the web anymore. That's the power of censorship. Same year, at UCLA, we do a similar kind of thing. We, we announce an internet history center, and that younger generation is still there <laughs> doing their thing, understanding the way they do. That happens to be the original imp sitting in its original location. How many revolutions, big revolutions, French Revolution, Industrial Revolution, can, do you know where well, you can point to the exact spot where it occurred? We got the exact four square feet where that switch started the internet. 